G'day Mr. Bennett here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at transmission gratings or diffraction gratings. Now, um, interesting when we start looking about uh, the light coming through, there's sections on here, this transmission gratting, where it's all rough, it's been scratched up by probably a diamond or something like that. So you're etching uh, lines into there. So when the light comes through those areas, what's going to happen is it's going to be diffracted or, or re diffracted in all different directions. So only the light that gets through these portions of the transmission grating is going to go straight through. All right, so that concept there, these are acting now like the slits in a double slit experiment. All right, so instead of having one, two slits, you've got multiple slits. All right, so that's the concept there. So what this does allow us to do is look at the interference of light through a multiple slits and you get some quite interesting patterns there so you get some interesting reinforcements and numbers all right so which is quite good um, i just want to talk about this diagram down here uh, so transmission grading so when we're looking at obviously there'll be a central order uh, maximum where they all interfere straight ahead of the transmission grading but when we come across to an angle what's happening is all of these particular lines are uh, sort of uh, reinforcing themselves and you're getting uh, an interference pattern at an angle from the thing. So if we look at the diagram we have here, it's, well it's essentially the same as um, what we have when we're looking at the um, Young's double slit experiment. Right? So we've got this distance here, that's the extra distance that you're travelling. So this is the D bit, the slit width. Right, and then you've got your distance here, which is the distance that you travel further. All right, so again, if we're thinking about it, we've got the opposite side, we've got the hypotenuse. So we're going to have sine theta is equal to lambda on d. Now, what can happen here for every one of these lines? They're going to go extra distance. So what we're going to say is that's going to be m lambda. So depending if you're looking at first order or your second order, how many times it's actually going to go. So therefore, if we bring the D up there, D sine theta is equal to M lambda. Now we can do the same thing when we're looking at the Young's double slit experiment. Now this is generally the formula that we use when we start looking at transmission gratings and the interference patterns. Now as I said before, what will happen is you'll see the central order maximum. All right, so that one there will appear to be in a position like here and then you'll get a first order maximum and a second order maximum and a third order maximum and that will appear uh, also on the top side as well All right? so it's going to be obviously your angle that you can go through is 90 degrees um, so this whole angle there will be 180 degrees 90 degrees either side of the central maximum so we would say this one here, when we start looking at the central one, that one there is M0, this one here is M1, that there's M2, that one there's M3. Right? And so obviously when we start looking at our D sine theta, uh, obviously M is going to be 0 for the first one, M is going to be 1, M is going to be 2, M is going to be 3. Right? So that's a really useful thing in terms of looking at the patterns. Now I want to talk about experiment that you're doing in class to prove the wavelength of a light beam. Again, so this is a, another part of the experiment. So the setup is we have a laser beam there. Right? We uh, have a diffraction grating. So what we'll do with our diffraction grating is in the experiment we will use several different types of diffraction gratings. All right? So uh, and we'll do a calculation and show you how you do that in a second. Uh, on a screen, we will need to measure this distance. Now, here we're saying it's one meter or 100 centimeters, but it doesn't need to be that. It can be whatever you want to make it. All right. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be measuring our m equals zero, m equals one, m equals two, m equals three over there. All right. So we'll do the same thing on the top. If we measure across these two things here. I think it makes sense, then you can actually see how centered the particular thing's going to be. So if we measure the distance from the central to M1, the central to M1 over there, 
those distances should be the same because it should be symmetrical. All right. So keeping that in mind, the, the, the idea of this practical is we know the formula here is d sine theta and that's equal to m lambda. In this part, we will know d. That will be stated for us. We will know our m value because we'll actually see it on the screen. All right. We want to work out what the wavelength is. All right. So therefore we have to work out some way of measuring so we're going to measure that. We're going to measure the wavelength. So we know the wave, I mean the angle. All right. So what you're simply going to do for each of these experiments, you're really going to have a right angle triangle. All right. You're going to have this L distance that we know. We're going to measure this distance here, x. All right. And so therefore that will allow us to work out the angle using tan. So once we've got the angle, then we can rearrange that formula. We can say that our wavelength is equal to d sine theta all over m, and that will allow us to work out our wavelengths. Now, the interesting thing here is you can work out your wavelength for each of the different uh, m values. Right? So then you can get a comparison how you're going with your measurements. Now, obviously, the further you're away from the screen, the bigger that particular gap is going to be will give you better results. All right? So that will actually allow you to, to do that. Now, let's just have a look at one quick example. Let's say I have a diffraction grating. A diffraction grating which has got 5,000 right, lines per centimetre. Right? And my first order, my second order maximum is at an angle of 26 degrees right? and I want to work out what the wavelength is. Okay, So we're going to use this information here now. When you're doing your D value it's always going to be equal to 1 divided by the number of lines per meter. So if I've got 5,000 lines per meter that means I've got 500,000 lines per. Uh, if I've got 5,000 lines per centimetre, it means I've got 500,000 lines per per uh, metre. And when I do that calculation, that gives me 2 by 10 to the minus 6 metres. So that's the separation you've got in there. It's quite amazing when you think of the number of lines that you actually do have on a transmission grating. Right. So I'm trying to work out my wavelength. Okay. That's simply going to be equal to. 2 by 10 to the minus 6. It's really important that you show the substitution. Sine of 26 degrees. And then my next bit over here is to divide that by 2. Alright, so that's technically what I'm going to do. Come to my calculator. I'll do that on my calculator. Alright, so if we go in there, we're going to go and uh, just create there. Right, so, so that's 2 to the minus 6 times by sine of 26. Make sure you catch those in degrees and then divide that by 2. Right, so that's going to give me 4.3a by 10 to the minus 7. Right, so when we start looking at light, it's really important that you. Um, recognize the sort of wavelengths that we're looking for again. Alright, so does that sound reasonable? Yes it does. Uh, that would be down the blue spectrum, so we'd be looking at probably a blue sample of light, uh, which is quite interesting. Now, the classic experiment is, uh, or classic sort of questions that you get here, uh, things like, for that wavelength of light, how many how many bright bands should I actually see? Alright, so we know that the maximum angle we're going to have is sine theta equals 90 degrees. All right, so we know sine of theta is equal to 1, isn't it? So if we know what our wavelength is, we know that wavelength is equal to 4.38 by 10 to the minus 7 meters. We know that we're trying to work out uh, our m value. We don't know what that is. All right, so if we want to work out our m value, just the rearrangement of that formula again is going to be 
m is equal to d sine theta all over our wavelength. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 2 by 10 to the minus 6. Our maximum angle we're going to have is sine of 90, which we know is going to be 1. And then that's all going to be over our wavelength, which is 4.38 by 10 to the minus 7. So if I go to my calculator, um, if I go 2 e to the minus 6, divide that by our answer from the previous question, and that will give me 4.56. So that's telling me my m value is 4.56, which means that we will see we'll see four bands, four four bands, yeah, four bands either side of m equals zero. So therefore, we'll see nine bands in total. Right, so that's what we expect to see when we're doing an experiment. So if we go up here, typical what you'll see on the wall, you'll see nine dots on the screen on the wall. All right, so you can predict what you're going to see for different wavelengths of light. Okay, so this is a useful experiment. So the one that we're going to be doing for our practical is simply this one here where we're going to measure the where the M1 and M2, M3 are and then we're going to work out the angle. Once we've got the angle, we'll be able to work out what the wavelength of the light is. Um, so I'll do some more questions uh, on another video that's, that's sort of going to help you make sure you understand this. I'll do some classic sort of questions that I'll, I'll sort of ask you in the test. All right? So, um, yeah, useful, very useful.